Он очень оперативный и главное по товарищески тепло. At least 164 people have been killed in the unrest that rocked Kazakhstan, including three children. Security forces have detained 9,900 people in the Central Asian nation. More than 100 businesses and banks were attacked. Nearly 400 vehicles were destroyed after peaceful protests against hikes and the price of car fuel turned violent. Kazakhstan President Kasim Jomar Tokayev described the protests as an attempted coup d'etat and put the blame on foreign trained bandits and terrorists. Meanwhile, Moscow claimed victory for restoring peace in the erstwhile USSR nation. So, how did the oil-rich nation reach this boiling point? Why is the country facing its biggest crisis since its independence in 1991? Who are the key players? Let's find out! of Kazakhstan, the largest landlocked country in the world. Located in Central Asia, it borders Russia in the north and west. China lies to its east. And in the south, it shares its border with three countries, Uzbekistan, Kyrgyzstan and Turkmenistan. The capital of Kazakhstan is Nur Sultan, formerly known as Astana.
Interestingly, the city's name was changed in 2019 to honor outgoing leader Nur Sultan Nazarbayev, who unexpectedly resigned after serving as the leader for 28 years. When Qasim Jomar Tokayev was sworn in as president, he promised to seek his predecessor's opinion on key decisions. After his 2019 resignation, Nazarbayev took the presidential charge of the National Security Committee and continued to wield enormous influence in the country. He continued to hold the formal title leader of the nation, while his eldest daughter, Dariga Nazarbayeva, was elected speaker of the upper house of parliament. But people have had enough. Old man, go away, a traditional anti-Nazarbayev slogan was heard during the recent protests. On January 5th, the old man had to step down as chairman of the National Security Committee to help Tokayev cope with the current crisis. And now Tokayev has issued rare criticism of his long ruling predecessor, blaming him for creating a layer of wealthy people. Thanks to the first president, the leader of the nation, a group of very profitable companies and a layer of wealthy people, even by international standards, have appeared in the country. I believe that the time has come to pay tribute to the people of Kazakhstan and help them on a systemic and regular basis. The Kazakh people are fed up with the country's immense wealth being held by a small number of corrupt elites. It is reported that 162 people make up 55% of Kazakhstan's wealth, a country with a population of 19 million. And more than half of the country's wealth is with this top brass. Several members of Nazarbayev's family and former associates are among Kazakhstan's richest people. Nazarbayev's second daughter, Dinara Kulibayeva, and her husband Timur Kulibayev are the majority shareholders of Halyuk Bank, Kazakhstan's biggest lender by assets. The market value of their stake stands at about $2.8 billion. Kairat Borambayev, the father-in-law of Nazarbayev's late grandson, Ay Sultan, owns the McDonald's franchise in Kazakhstan and Belarus. Nazarbayev's eldest daughter, Dariga Nazarbayeva, and her son, Nurali Aliyev, owns a property portfolio in Britain, estimated by the Times newspaper as worth 140 million pounds including the Baker Street address of the fictional character Sherlock Holmes. And here is an interesting trivia. In 2013, Nazarbayev paid rapper Kanye West reportedly 3 million US dollars for a gig for his grandson's wedding. Всему миру распространите, что в нашем Казахстане процветает коррупция. У нас Казахстан превратился в частные предприятия Назарбаевых. Все, что у нас в Казахстане есть стратегически важные места, да, все принадлежит семье Назарбаевых. Справедливость. Почему, например, один клан живут хорошо, а остальные в нищете? Problems, the grievances that people have been airing since January 2nd when these protests started, protests started were absolutely all domestic problems. Uh, problems of wages, problems of lack of uh, sufficient social benefits. Uh, you know, problems with, with fuel, of course, which, which started it. Um, and, and when they, when they called out, when they chanted or, or yelled, uh, you know, demands or something, they, they specifically targeted people in the government. The, the first president of Kazakhstan, Nur Sultan Nazarbayev, being the main target.
Almaty, the country's capital till 1997, was the epicenter of the protests. It is the most populous city in Kazakhstan and also the commercial hub. Wondering why the capitals were switched 24 years ago? The government stated that the main reasons for moving the capital north to Astana from Almaty were the area's susceptibility to earthquakes and its close proximity to the Chinese border. Almaty has been struck by a string of destructive earthquakes in the past. In 1911, a 7.7 .7 magnitude earthquake struck the Russian Turkestan region that killed 452 people and destroyed more than 770 buildings alone in Almaty. Landlocked countries have disadvantages of trade and economy as they depend on their neighboring countries for transit. Kazakhstan is the leading economy in Central Asia, generating 60% of the region's GDP. It has huge reserves of uranium as well as oil and gas. The Central Asian country is the world's biggest uranium exporter and is among the top oil and coal producers. Despite these strong trade footholds, inequality is rife in the country, and the government is failing its people. This dictatorship of Nazarbayev, this man who has oppressed the Kazakh people until today, set the place on fire by raising the gas prices in a country that actually has the gas reservoirs itself. On one hand, we have quite an innocent natural protest of people who feel underpaid. The country is rich, but people are poor. This protest is clear. It's absolutely endogenous. It wasn't inspired by any external forces. On the other hand, some counter-elites actively join and heat up these protests for their own political interests. These are people who would like to take part. As protests raged on, Karim Mazimov, the former head of Kazakhstan's domestic intelligence agency, was arrested on suspicion of high treason. Several other officials were also detained. Blaming militant groups for the violent protests, Kazakh president called upon Russia to send troops to help quell the uprising. Russian paratroopers were deployed to Kazakhstan as part of a peacekeeping force that includes troops from four other former Soviet republics who were part of the CSTO or of the Collective Security Treaty Organization. CSTO, Collective Security Treaty Organization, CSTO, according to their charter, they're, they're, they're obligated to come to the defense of a member country, of which Kazakhstan is one, uh, in the event that the sovereignty or territorial integrity of that country is threatened by external forces, meaning that if it's an internal conflict, uh, they're not supposed to get involved at all. And there have been examples where there have been internal conflicts in member states previously, and the CSTO did not send any troops. So it was, it was really the change of wording. Uh, you know, these, uh, the Kazakh president, uh, Kasim Jamar Tokayev, had acknowledged that these were protesters, uh, you know, domestic protesters with domestic uh, grievances. So when he changed his language and called them terrorists with foreign training, um, then he was able to get this group to come and help him out. This is the first time the 20-year-old Collective Security Treaty Organization has activated its Mutual Defense Clause. Um, 
господин Такаев не очень уверенный в лояльности своей. Такаев is not sure about the loyalty of his own law enforcers, as such regimes always rely on bayonets. He had to ask for bayonets from outside the country. He will now have to pay for it. Therefore, Tokayev will retain power by means of paratroopers or riot police mainly from Russia. He will depend on Russia more heavily even in comparison to Nur Sultan Nazarbayev. Putin will not miss this chance in this regard. Let's understand what Russia will gain from intervening in Kazakhstan. To understand the ties between the two nations, we need to go back to the 18th century. The Kazakhs raided the territory of Russia throughout the 18th century, causing the Russians to advance into the Kazakh steppes, a large area of flat, unforested grassland. By the mid-19th century, the Russians seized Kazakhstan and made it part of the Russian Empire. They also liberated all the slaves in 1859. After the 1917 Russian Revolution that led to the Civil War, the territory of Kazakhstan witnessed a lot of geographical changes. In 1936, it became the Kazakh Soviet Socialist Republic, a part of the Soviet Union. But things changed in 1991. Kazakhstan was the last of the Soviet republics to declare independence during the dissolution of the Soviet Union. When the USSR collapsed in December 1991, Kazakhstan inherited the fourth largest nuclear arsenal in the world, after Russia, the United States and Ukraine. It relinquished all nuclear warheads to Russia by 1995. Kazakhstan also inherited one of the largest nuclear test sites in the world, the Semipalatinsk nuclear weapons test site. Where the Soviet Union conducted nearly 450 nuclear tests. It was fully decommissioned by the year 2001. This is the world's first space base, the Baikonur Cosmodrome. Established on the 2nd of June 1955, Baikonur Cosmodrome was used for launching the first artificial satellite, Sputnik 1. It was also the launch pad for the world's first human spaceflight, made by Yuri Gagarin in 1961. Though it is located in Kazakhstan, it is an enclave of Russian territory. The Kazakh and Russian governments work together on the maintenance and operations of Baikonur. Moscow has since commissioned its own spaceport in the Far East, but the Russian space program continues to operate from Baikonur. Numerous Russian commercial, military and scientific missions are launched annually from this site. It's also a jumping off point for NASA astronauts. After the retirement of NASA's space shuttle program in 2011, Baikonur became the only working launch site 
to the International Space Station. So far, the Baikonur Cosmodrome is unaffected by the political turmoil in Kazakhstan. Another neighbor that would be keeping a close eye on the Kazakhstan crisis is China. The instability in Nur Sultan can hamper Beijing's ongoing Belt and Road projects. China's Xinjiang region shares a 1,770-kilometer-long border with Kazakhstan. Positioned between China and Europe, Kazakhstan is a crucial link in the Belt and Road initiative. In fact, China's President Xi Jinping announced the massive infrastructure project while he was visiting the country in September 2013. The Chinese embassy in Kazakhstan has sent out a security risk alert to Chinese companies, advising them to pay close attention to how the situation develops. Meanwhile, Xi Jinping offered his support for Tukayev's efforts to put down any attempt of a color revolution in this region. China is willing to increase cooperation with Kazakhstan in law enforcement and security departments, prevent and oppose any attempt of color revolution, and jointly oppose the interference and infiltration of any external forces. The timing of the Kazakhstan protests has coincided with U.S.-Russia negotiations in Geneva over the Ukraine border crisis. It has given Moscow a chance to flex its military muscle and show its influence in the region, a fact that has clearly irked the United States. Additionally, U.S. firms have invested tens of billions of dollars in Kazakhstan, concentrated in the oil and gas sector. What's happening in uh, there is different from what's happening uh, on Ukraine's borders. Um, having said that, I think one uh, lesson of recent history is that uh, once uh, Russians are in your house, it's sometimes very difficult to get them to leave. A number of countries, uh, the U.S. Uh, and and their allies, that would like nothing more than to see an ally uh, of Russia uh, with their government uh, overthrown, uh, you know, by uh, an armed insurrection on the streets. That would that would tickle them pink. Um, uh, so that reaction, their questioning, despite you know the egregious hypocrisy on their own score, is entirely expected. On the 11th of January, Kazakh's president Tokayev announced that the peacekeeping contingent of CSTO will be leaving the country by the 21st of January. So, what does the future hold for Kazakhstan? With the Nazarbayev family's iron grip on Kazakhstan finally loosening, can Tokayev steer the country out of this crisis? The government needs to act fast to establish an equitable economy.